Once it was clear that the invasion had succeeded and that the Moscow had imposed its will? I don't think there was a, a sort of overnight or immediate moment when I felt like this is all over. Um, it was too much of a, of a festival, too much of a strong thing to die immediately. But for me, and I suppose for many people as well, the moment of truth came when Dubček was actually speaking on the radio, when he was returned from captivity in Moscow. And I listened to it in the occupied town hall when I was working as an interpreter for the first week of the invasion. And the soldiers were already leaving, they were clearing out because everything was as if returning to normal. And that's what Dubček was saying, that, you know, we're going to continue with the reforms and everything's going to be just fine as it was before. But he couldn't even speak. There was a broken man talking, sobbing between words. I can't describe the feeling. It was really like a, an era co coming to an end. And, and it was sadness, but it was also anger, I think. Um, a very subdued anger, like you feel you can't go on fighting. But anger, nevertheless. What did people do? People didn't go home overnight. Like I said, it took another nine months before they were able to impose some kind of normalization, before the strikes stopped, before the students um, stopped meeting. It, it took... Um, well, until April 1969, when Dubček was finally ousted and, and the new regime, which is still there, took over. And even after that, after, after that moment, there was a while when people still stayed in the streets, the first anniversary of the invasion. But I think it was, even though they stayed on the streets, they, they knew it was a, a swan song. It wasn't really going anywhere. It was just a slow death of, of, of a movement, a slow death of a historical moment that is not going to be repeated or cannot be continued. Could you describe the purge, who was purged and the process itself, the interview? I think the new regime was actually very clever. The whole process of normalization is one of the most dreadful, I think, in history, exactly because it wasn't bloody. It wasn't a dramatic purge. Nobody was executed. Nobody was even sent to prison. Even Dubček himself was just sent back to Slovakia and made an, a, a little clerk in a forestry office, simply isolated from the people by three uh, secret police bullies that were on his heels day and night for 15 years. What happened was they actually asked everybody in the party or everybody in institutions, schools, offices, all, all the, the intelligentsia, all the white-collar people, not workers really, not unless they had some um, party posts. You know, they took people, say, into a little room. It's best imagined like that because most of the time that's what happened. Into a little office where there would be a little committee two, three, maybe four people. And you would be on your own, and nobody there with you. It wasn't a big meeting or anything. It was a very private situation. So you were exposed to history, as it were, just very much on your own. And you would be asked, did you think that the entry of the Warsaw Pact troops in August was a fraternal help? And of course, you'd, your whole being would want to yell no, it wasn't. It was an act of violence. But you would think, nobody's here to support me. The streets are empty, the crowds have gone. And if I say, no, it was an act of violence, it wasn't fraternal help, it, it, it was a terrible thing to have done for Soviet Union, you would endanger your entire career, you would endanger your children's future. 
So I suppose most of the people just said, yes, it was threaten help and the hell with it. And, uh, and I think there is an explanation in there, a moral explanation, why people then actually went along with the whole normalization, ugly as it was, because they were morally crippled. And of course, those people who didn't say, yes, it was fraternal help, who did say, no, it was an act of violence, did suffer immediately that kind of punishment that the others people knew would follow, which is they were immediately thrown into a pit of the society, expelled from the party, expelled from all the positions they held if they were professional people, as most of them were, they were taken out from professional life, prevented from um, working, from continuing their jobs, from continuing their writing, publishing. They become parias of the society. And the whole horrible thing carried on to their children. They were not allowed to study. They suffered very much the same, same fate. So they, by this very small and private act of asking everyone the question they knew, there was no positive answer to, and yet forcing anyone, many people to do so. They just cut the society in half into seven magnificent ones, you know, the few thousand that, that refused the, the moral crippling. They, they, they stayed with the truth. But their punishment was so spectacular that there was no way. That's why, for example, we can't heal as easily as Hungary could or as quickly, even though it took there 12 years as well. Because of that absolute cut between the people who said no and people who said yes and who lost, it's like really cutting a body in two. Three. I'll take one. Okay. Yeah. I think I felt very much like everybody else, terribly angry. The remarkable thing was there was not a second, a minute of fear. Nobody was afraid. We were just terribly angry. And we felt that we were so much in the right that they couldn't do anything to us. And we stood there with that anger and the absolute absence of fear with empty hands, feeling this is actually the day of victory. That's the funny thing. We, we weren't feeling we were losing, not in the first week. So, you know, it was anger, but also that fantastic feeling of victory and that fantastic feeling of togetherness. We were all out in the streets. You felt that nobody stayed at home, babies and old people included. And that again, I don't think will be repeated. I wouldn't have missed that time for anything in the world. It may sound horrible, but it's true.